Hi, my name is Rick Bloodworth. This is the Common Sense Christian Channel, and it's Thursday, so we're going to have a story today that gives a moral. And the story I have for you today really is a good one. It's from Zig Ziglar, and it's one of the most popular illustrations that he used in all the years that, that uh, he wrote and, and gave public speeches on things, and it involved the example of a pump. And it, it was, it was uh, I guess, a number of years ago with a couple of his friends. One's name was Bernard and one's name was Jimmy. And they were driving through Alabama, and they, through the foothills of Alabama. Apparently it was a very hot day, and before uh, the time of air conditioning, or at least for these two gentlemen, it doesn't appear that they had an air, conditioning, <laughs> air conditioner that was working in their car. And so they're getting hot, they're thirsty, and so the two friends, one's name is Bernard and the other Jimmy, uh, are looking for a place to get a drink and they spy an old farmhouse. Well, knowing what they did about southern Alabama or that part of Alabama was that most of them had a well there. And so, sure enough, they were able to spy a well with a pump in an old abandoned farmhouse. And so Bernard stopped the car and he jumped out and he ran to that well and he started pumping on that handle of, the, uh, of that hand pumped well and just did it for, for several minutes. And finally he, he called Jimmy, you're going to have to go get a bucket of water from that creek and we're going to have to prime the pump. We're going to have to put a little water into this uh, so that it can get the suction it needs so that it'll start pumping water. And so his friend did that and Bernard is still pumping away and pumping away. And after a while in that hot August sun, he gets tired. And, and, and his, his friend Jimmy urges him on to don't stop now. These, these wells are very deep. But he said it's a good thing that they are because these deep wells have some of the purest and the cleanest and the best tasting and the coolest water you'll ever drink. And so Bernard kept on going for a while and finally he just stopped. He threw his hands up and he said, there's no water in this well. <laughs> and at that point, Jimmy rushed over and started pumping on it. He said, you can't stop now. Otherwise, all the effort that you've expended on trying to get that water up from the bottom of that well is going to be wasted because the water is just going to flow back down that pipe and you're just going to start, have to start over again. Well, there's a lesson in that for us. And it involves work ethic. One of the ways you can tell somebody with, with a good work ethic is this. They're willing to put the effort in prior to getting the reward. Now that's getting rare and rare today. It, it, you have to admit. We have people who want so very often something for nothing or they want instant gratification. They don't want to put in long and hard work when they're not seeing the results of that long and hard work. And if they're not used to long and hard work, such as pumping on a pump that's got it to a deep well that you just know from experience, you're going to have to pump for a good long time before you get that water out. Well, people without a work ethic, people without that experience, are just going to give up if they put the work into it at all. And I love this story that Zig Ziglar tells because he compares it to, to some of the, the, the workers who would like to get something before the hard work. They're the kind that will go to their boss and they'll say, if you'll just give me a raise, I guarantee you I'll work really hard. And if the boss points out, well, you had not been working all that hard yet, but the employee will say, well, you just pay me right and I'll make sure that I give you more effort than anybody else. Or the employee that goes up and, and will say, I'd, I'd like a promotion. And the boss points out, you really haven't done anything that, that would seem to merit that promotion. But the person says, well, let me tell you how I work, how I work best. I work best when I'm in charge. I guarantee you, if you'll put me in charge, you'll get more work out of these people that you've hired. I'll be the best supervisor you've ever seen. Well, in both instances, you have a person who has a very inflated sense of their worth who's never really proven that they're capable of the hard work that's required to bring quality effort. And a wise employer is not going to give that person a raise. They're not going to give them a promotion. As a matter of fact, they may just go ahead and let them go. Because if this person was capable of the harder work and the better effort to begin with and he hadn't been putting it in, 
Well, he's been cheating the company, hadn't he? Well, this is the way life is, and this is something that's really critical for us to understand. There's a passage in Galatians uh, chapter 6 that has some lessons in it that are very similar to the ones that Zig Ziglar was trying uh, to get across in his illustration of the pump. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, it says this, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you'll fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions, then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else, for each one should carry his own load. Well, now that may seem a little contradictory at first, doesn't it? To carry each other's burdens, but then to go on in just a few verses later and says each one should carry his own load. What's God having Paul tell us? And the answer is this. The, it's, it is uh, in the understanding of the words burden and load. The idea of a load is something that is manageable. It's something that's reasonable. It's something that you should be able to do on your own without a lot of help, without bothering somebody else and interrupting them from carrying their load. But a burden, now that's something different, isn't it? A burden is the idea of a crushing load, a load that's too heavy for one person to bear. But two people working together will be able to carry that burden. And so... When God has Paul tell us to help each other with our burdens, but to carry our own loads, he's telling us we need to do the things that we're capable of doing and allow other people who are capable of doing the things they're capable of doing to do just that. But when we see somebody who's struggling with too heavy of a load to reasonably be expected to carry it, then we help. And there's a lot of people in life that we see like that on both ends. You'll see people on the side of the road with will work for food signs that if they really wanted to work for food, they would know that the place to find work is not on the corner with a the sign. They're very likely there because that corner is a place where enough people will see them, feel guilty for having too much, and will just give them money. They certainly don't want to give that person a job because then they would be expected to, to, to watch over them and to spend some time with it. And it's just a lot easier just to give people money. And con artists, knowing this, will take advantage of that. People who really want a job are going to go to the places where jobs are. They're not going to be standing out somewhere insinuating that they're willing to do their fair share when in fact they're very rarely willing to do their, their part. And that's what we find in, in Galatians. You, you, you carry your own load. And you allow other people to carry their own load. You don't help them. You don't cripple them by helping with them with something that they should be able to do. I don't know how many times I've seen an older person giving money to a young, healthy, vibrant person who has a will work for food sign. They could be out doing some actual work, the actual work that this older person apparently has done within their lives. So, we help each other with the things they cannot be reasonably expected to do, but we take care of what we need to take care of and what we can and allow other people to do the same. Again, getting back to this idea of the pump. You're just pumping along and pumping along and pumping along. And if you're not experienced enough to realize that that water is nearly there to the top, you might be tempted, like Bernard, to, to just give up. Or you might have the wisdom that Jimmy did to know that after a while that water is going to come. And once it comes, you don't have to pump nearly as hard. You can just keep a good steady pressure on that pump handle. You can get all the water that you want or, or need. And, and that's the way it is in life. In this same passage in Galatians, it picks up in verse 7 with, by saying this, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Now, why would he say that? We understand the part where he says a man reaps what he sows, but why does he start that off by saying, do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked? Well, the reason for that is a lot of people think that God can be mocked. 
because a lot of people think they can reap where they have not sown. Zig Ziglar, in his example, gives the example of a farmer who's not planted a crop, but he would sure like to reap a harvest. And so he prays to God and tells him, if you'll just give me a big harvest this year, I promise you I'll plant uh, a, a crop next year. It'll be the biggest planting of any, any farm around here, and then, then I'll, I'll, I'll do my work. They want the reward before they've put in the effort. And, and essentially what they're doing is they're mocking God because God says you reap what you sow and they're saying, no, that's not true. I can sow where I haven't reaped. I can stand out with my will work for food sign with no intention of working ever, but with the intention of reaping the reward that work would normally bring. Money in this case or some kind of goods in this case. But from a spiritual standpoint, your eternity hinges on the understanding that you're only going to reap what you sow. It's been very popular in recent years to, to, to preach a, uh, a salvation without works, without the idea that you have any effort. It's a salvation without obedience. It's the idea that God's grace is the only thing that you need. Such, such a philosophy is, is flawed when you think about it because if grace was the only thing that you need, the devil would be saved. And many people say, no, no, it's grace and faith. It's, you, you have to have faith too, but let me tell you, the devil believes in God. He knows better than you and I that God really does exist. And he also understands God's grace. But we're also told that, the, that hell is prepared for the devil and his angels and for those who refuse to be obedient to God. You are going to reap what you sow, and so if you sow sin, you can expect to reap hell someday if you don't repent. God doesn't want that for you. But He doesn't want you to be deceived into thinking that you can just go your own way, do what you want, and never put in an ounce of effort for the Master. Because there are those people in life who are convinced that if God will just give them heaven, that then, oh, they're going to be such good people, the best servants God has ever had, and then they'll, he will see just how good of a servant they can be, even though they've never displayed that in the past. Imagine standing before a wood stove and saying, if you'll just give me fire, I'll, I'll put some wood in you. Well, anybody with, with any sense at all understands that you're going to have to put the wood in first before you can get the fire. But it's so odd when it comes to religion that people are willing to believe that you can have quality results without quality effort. That you can get that water without pumping it, without putting anything in, without priming the pump. But, but that's never been. And so God says, don't be deceived, because a lot of people have been deceived by these fine-sounding preachers who want to make sure that, that you know that you can get whatever you want. And by the way, maybe after that fine message, you'll put a little extra in the, in the collection plate for them. This passage goes on to say in verse 8, the one who sows to please his sinful nature will from that nature reap destruction. If you get involved with sin and you don't repent, someday you're going to be destroyed in the fires of hell. God doesn't want that. That's why he extends his grace to us. His grace, his extension of grace is an invitation for us to repent and become obedient. And that means that we serve. Christians are called servants, not masters. And servants work. Can you earn your salvation? And the answer is obviously no, you cannot earn your salvation. But if you, if you are so deceived as to think that you can be saved without any effort on your part, that somehow all you got to do is believe and then go on the welfare plan of, of, of grace, that's never been what grace has been intended for. Grace, in essence, is your ticket to work. But it's your ticket to work now. And not just not, not to work thinking that somehow then you'll deserve a reward, but to work serving the Master because He deserves it. 
And even though you're unworthy at the end of all that, even though you failed so many times because you've repented and come back to him on his terms, someday you will be rewarded. And it'll be far in excess of any work that you've put in. So don't worry. You're not going to earn your salvation. But you can blow it by refusing to lift a finger for the master. And so, this passage goes along to say, the one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up. This is another lesson perhaps we can learn from the pump. You remember Bernard, he's been working in the hot August sun for a long time, pumping and pumping and pumping, trying to get water, but there comes a point where he's ready to give up before the water comes. In a like manner, there's a lot of people who have been pretty good servants of God all of their life, but somewhere at the end, they just don't think it's worth it anymore. They, they don't see the reward, they don't see the need, they don't see the cause, and they no longer believe that God is worthy of the effort, and so they give up. But God has told us we'll receive a reward if we do not give up. And so what's the lesson of the pump? Well, you have to start pumping to begin with, don't you? You have to put in a lot of hard work. Sometimes you have to prime that pump. You have to put something into it other than just your work. You have to put some something into it to help that water start coming up. And then you got to keep on pumping and pumping and pumping. As if, understanding, I mean, knowing that the only way you're ever going to get that water is if you keep doing your part. But at a point, the water's going to start flowing. And at some point in your spiritual life, you'll, you'll see the benefit. Hopefully you see it by now. Hopefully you, you can see right now the benefit of being able to go to God in prayer and asking Him for help, even in difficult times. You're still going to go through difficult times, but which would you rather? Would you rather go through those difficult times with God's help or, or without God's help? You still have to put the work in. You still have to pump the pump. But God's going to give you the increase someday if you don't give up. And for those who are willing to keep on pumping, to keep on going, well, God has a tremendous reward. And no, it's not something that you earn because your work has been so splendid. But yes, you do have to have effort in order to get that reward. It will still be by the grace of God. It will still be because Jesus loved you enough to die in your place and shed his blood as the payment, the penalty for your sins. But they've done these things. Extended God's, God's extended His grace. Jesus has made His sacrifice so that now you can serve them to the best of your ability. And someday, if you'll have the work ethic that it takes, spurred on by the love of God and of Christ for the wonderful things they've done for you, and if you'll keep on pumping, so to speak, you're going to have such a fine life because in good times and in bad times, you have the hope, that expectation of receiving heaven someday. Not because you're so good, but because God is faithful in keeping his promises. And if you'll do his part, he, your, if you will do your part, he is guaranteed to do his part. But you got to put the work in you got to keep pumping. you got to be faithful unto death, as Jesus said, and someday you'll receive a crown of life. What kind of work ethic do you have for the Master? You might be really proud of your work ethic in the physical world, and I hope you do have a good work ethic in that. But if you find that your work ethic has been somewhat lacking when it comes to your spiritual life, because you have been on the well work for salvation plan, but you have no intention of working, uh, it may not work out so well for you. But if you'll do your small part, even though you're not earning your salvation, someday you'll get to reap the reward. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man 
will certainly reap what he sows. What are you sowing right now? Are you sowing into salvation? Or are you sowing just vacant thoughts and empty promises? Like the employee that goes to his boss and says, I know I had been working very hard so far, but if you'll just give me a raise, if you'll just give me a promotion, then I'll really work for you. Or are you willing to do your part now, even though you know you're unworthy and it's not going to earn you salvation, it is certainly going to allow you to reap the reward that's available for those who will take advantage of God's grace and of Christ's shed blood. Well, that's the lesson for today. I hope it gives you something to think about. But I appreciate your listening today, and I pray that God will richly bless you as you seek to do your part to keep on going, to keep on pumping, and so someday to reap that reward that God has waiting for those who are faithful. God bless you.